Hi everyone, I'm Laura Laporte from the admissions office at Fulton Montgomery Community College. And I have with me Rebecca Casacria. She's the coordinator of financial aid. And we're gonna to talk today about how do you pay for college? That seems to be a topic that's on everyone's minds, especially right now mm -hmm. with many bills going out. Uh, people are, are receiving their tuition and fee bills. And um, you know, they might be thinking about how, how am I gonna how am I gonna pay for this? Sure. So Becky, I want to start off by asking you, is there still time to apply for financial aid for the fall semester? I'm sure that's people are thinking, I haven't even maybe gotten started yet. Laura, that's a very good question. And yes, uh, there is time. Uh, when you do a, a FAFSA, a free application for federal student aid online, it takes five to seven days to process to get to us. Um, so there is um, a good amount of time, although I would say don't wait too much longer. Um, once you complete the FAFSA, you, it can go directly into the TAP application. And that, again, doesn't take very long. Um, so five to seven days to get the whole, hopefully the whole thing processed through. And and um, we'll be able to get that information and get a financial aid package to students. Good. Well, that's that's great news. Are there any best practices as to how maybe we, you could expedite your processing? Are there things that people could do to maybe make it go a little bit faster? Or? Sure. Um, online is always the best. Um, we have had students who have called and asked if they can do anything on paper, and we don't suggest paper. Paper takes four to six weeks to process, where mm -hmm. anything online takes five to seven days. Um, to best practices is always to use the data retrieval system, which mm -hmm. is pulling your tax information in uh, to the FAFSA. Because if, if you don't use the data retrieval, sometimes we have to double check things and that just extends mm -hmm. the process. The other best practice we always say to students and to parents is if you have questions, ask. Mm -hmm call our office, give us a call, ask the question that you have, because we don't want you to have to guess through this process. We're here to help. We are, you know, your community college. We are Fulton Montgomery Community College. We will help anyone and, and everyone get through this process. So always call our office and ask those questions. Don't be afraid. We've heard every question on the, <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> Great. So once someone gets through the FAFSA and they've gotten in the additional paperwork and so forth, like on average, how long would it take for a student to receive like an award letter to kind of know, gee, what, here's what my eligibility is? Sure. Um, it normally takes us about 24 to 48 hours once all the paperwork is complete to get a financial aid package to a student. So we can typically turn that around in, in a little bit of time. Um, but we just have to make sure that students are, you know, getting, um, getting the information to us. So getting the FAFSA, getting the TAP application to us. And then if we are emailing you, which is how we communicate with our students is through their FM email. And in the initial process, their personal email, um, they've got to respond. So mm -hmm. as soon as, as our, the FAFSA is here, we're going to start emailing students and talking to them. Um, so, you know, just making sure that, that students are, are communicating mm -hmm. back with us to get that information. Good. Oh, good. Can you explain the difference between grants mm -hmm. and loans? Sure. And are they both considered financial aid? They are both considered financial aid. And the reason why, and I'll start with the student loans, is because the student loans are backed by the Department of Education, um, they have um, uh, certain uh, protections as far as when a student goes to pay back their student loans. Um, but also, because they're through the Department of Education, the interest rates tend to be lower. Um, and there are you don't have to make any payments on those while you're in school. So that's why they're considered financial aid. Um, grants are money that you don't have to pay back. And what we do as a process is we try to find all the grants first. So we start with the federal grants. We go with the federal Pell Grant, the Supplemental Educational Opportunity mm -hmm. Grant, federal work study, and although that is a, that you have to do something, you have to work for that money, um, it is considered a grant um, because they don't throw that money back into the calculation next year as earned money. So we often get that question about work study of why is that a grant? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of, um, you know, through the process, it you're, you do have to work for that those funds, mm -hmm. but then um, next year it is not concerned, considered earned income. And then there's your student loans, your subsidized student loan, your unsubsidized student loan, and your fed, and your person your 
parent loans. Um, and those are all under the, um, the umbrella of mm -hmm. federal grants. So, yes. So, even if you take out a loan, you mm -hmm. still have to fill out a FAFSA? Still have to fill out even a FAFSA that. to be able to determine if you're eligible for the need-based loan or the non-need-based loan. Right. And the difference between the two is the subsidized Stafford loan. The student doesn't have to pay any interest or payments while they're in school. Okay. And that is determined based on financial need. Right. The unsubsidized Stafford loan, um, we... It is there for students, um, mm -hmm. whether uh, you have financial need or not. Um, but in order to determine that, you have to file the FAFSA. Right. So okay, good. So file the FAFSA is file the FAFSA. really the first step. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, some of our viewers might be wondering, can financial aid help you pay for school supplies? In particular, with the pandemic, many students were left without technology. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a reliable desktop mm -hmm. computer or laptop computer. Sure. And now... Many schools are requiring that, you know, you have reliable right. technology. So is that something that financial aid can help you, you know, cover those costs as well? Yeah, it sure can. Um, what happens with any type of financial aid, whether it's uh, federal, state, or institutional, we build it all into a financial aid package. And that package is based on a cost of attendance. Now, the cost of attendance is not only based on the direct cost of tuition and fees, but it's also based on other things like books and supplies, mm. uh, housing costs, uh, whether you're living at home or in an apartment, you might have to pay rent at home. Mm -hmm. um, so that is built into the cost of attendance. So your financial aid can often exceed just the tuition and fees. Okay. And if it does, then you can use that money to cover books, supplies, a computer, uh, which we have seen a lot of students mm. um, needing better um, or even their initial uh, technology needs. Yeah. You know, I have something I've heard uh, parents say or students say is, I'm not going to apply for financial because I'm not eligible for anything. And not I want to ask you that question. Sure. Like, you know, should someone apply for financial aid, even if they think that they're not going to be eligible for any, let's say, free money? Yes. What would be your advice? My advice is the first time through, always apply. Let us tell you that you're not eligible because the the calculations of the FAFSA and the TAP, um, Excelsior, mm -hmm. um, it, they all vary and they're all different. So we do suggest that everyone files the first time through just so that we can take a look at it and we can see how it all works and then say to you, yes, hey, by the way, you are eligible for this. Mm -hmm. It might be $500, but $500 is still $500. Um, so we do highly suggest that everybody files the first time through. If the first time through you're not eligible for anything, you don't want to borrow student loans, then we say, the rest is up to you. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to file in another year if you choose not right. to. Right. Um, so talking about applying for financial aid, mm -hmm. you know, it can be intimidating. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, a very lengthy it is. form. Um, some people may be intimidated just by going onto a website mm -hmm. and not really understanding exactly what they're doing. It, it can be confusing. Um, is there assistance to get help someone get through that application? Oh, always. Um, we help all of it. Like I said in the beginning, we are your community college, so we are here to help all of our students through that process. Um, we can set up... Um, all the technology ways now, whether it be a Zoom call or Microsoft Teams or over email or give us a call. Um, we can help you get through that process. A lot of it is general information, but we understand that once you get to either the data retrieval or putting parents' tax information mm -hmm. in, it gets, you know, we understand the hesitation. Um, the website is completely safe, um, and we tell all of our students and all of our parents that. Mm -hmm. uh, so anybody who's worried about that, there's no need to worry. And there's multiple ways to do it. There is an app now, um, oh, which right. is very easy. Um, and that is My Student Aid. And if you download the mm -hmm. app, you'll go right through that. Um, and then the website is also very yeah. good at, my, at studentaid.gov. Nice. So I know you've probably gotten this question you know, before from people um, saying, you know, it's asking for this information of my prior, prior year taxes, mm -hmm. and especially with the pandemic, mm -hmm. of course, um, that's not really a good reflection right. of what my income, what my 
situation is right, right at this time. Mm-hmm. Is there an opportunity for people to have that reviewed or, you know, or do they, is there a strict rule that they have to go by their prior, prior year? Talk a little bit about that. Cause I know that's sure. something that people always, oh, yes. I've got a, I've got a situation that mm-hmm. came up and it changed mm-hmm. everything. Yep. Uh, that is called special condition. And what happens is the FAFSA is filed in October of every year and it is filed off of the most recently completed tax year. So that is why we're going back to 2019. Now, in any year, um, and most certainly within the, the pandemic years, things have changed. Mm. So when you file the FAFSA, it's very black and white. You pull in 2019 tax information, and that's where we start. But if you have had a situation um, where there is um, a separation in the family, if there is a death in the family, if something has happened with COVID where you've been laid off or there was a decrease in income, That is where the special condition comes into play. And we do have the paperwork. We have all the guidance Mm -hmm. on how we have to handle that. All the student really needs to do is call us and say, hey, X, Y, or Z happened. What can I do? Great. That's that's good. Um, So let's switch gears and talk about scholarships. Sure. Um, So obviously FM offers scholarships. Mm -hmm. Are there still scholarships available for fall? There are. We have awarded a majority of them, but we have $178,000 of named and um, endowed funding that we are awarding now. Um, We have, like I said, have awarded a majority of them, but there is always that small pool. So if you haven't applied, you can go to our website, Mm -hmm. fmcc.edu, and look under financial aid for grants and scholarships and get that application in. It is super easy. There are no references reference letters, there's no essays, there's, you just have to put your information in. Um, can I benefit from financial aid if I'm a part-time student? You absolutely can. The federal grants, the federal loans are out there for part-time students. We also have some New York State grants and our scholarships we also uh, award to part-time students. So to conclude my questions, Becky, mm-hmm. I would just say to you, what advice would you give someone who maybe is first-time college student, they're uncertain about this whole process of financial aid. What advice would you give a parent and student for the first time sure. kind of going down this whole fi- financial aid path? My one piece of advice is to call us, to call us and ask the question. Or call us and just say, I don't know what question to ask. Because <laughs> um, you don't know what you don't yeah. know. So uh, don't be afraid to give our office a call to say, hey, where do I start? Mm-hmm. Um, we... We are very happy to answer that question, to get through that process, and to help that student achieve the goal of their education. Great. Thank you so much, Becky. I appreciate welcome. it.